Welcome to Market Matters. I'm Nadia Hassan together with Charlotte Chong. It is an interesting day. It's Tuesday and I just realised yesterday we were talking about this. I mean, aside from Slangor, mm -hmm. this is actually the last, last full working week for KL, right? Next week, we only have three days. The day after that, we only have four. Mm -hmm. Wow. How, how does that feel? Actually, last week was my full, work, full working week. Yeah, exactly. This, this week, yesterday, I was on leave anyway. People are wrapping up towards the end mm -hmm. of the year. And usually at this time, you see a lot of window dressing. But we don't get that with the KLCI, especially for yesterday and today. Correct. Today, though, it looked within spitting distance of breaking it because it actually went down about 0.44% mm -hmm. to uh, 1,000. 622.8. But we were watching the market the whole day and it did look like at certain points it might have actually just reached it. But yeah. It's so, pretty flat uh, yeah, market exactly. today. Total volume was at about 1.43 billion worth about 1.66 billion ringgit. Top losers were BAT, United Plantations and Kuang Rubber Company. And top gainers were uh, Top Glove which uh, we are going to talk about it later, Ajinomoto and Ta'an. Now, when we move on to uh, the regional markets, so what happened in the regional markets today is we saw some mixed reaction from the regional markets today. And Nikkei 225 down 1.68%, Shanghai down 0.29%. And the reason for that, of course, mm. is because, aside from the fact that commodity prices have been a pain as of late, is that everybody is waiting for, well, I won't say tomorrow, mm -hmm. for uh, for Asia, it's going to be Thursday morning. Later this week, The yes. Fed or FOMC reserve meeting is actually supposed to go on as soon as, um, as, soon as the US wakes mm -hmm. up, and they're going to give their decision about whether or not to raise interest rates the first time since 2006. Mm, to, well, they say Wednesday afternoon in the States, which for us will be Thursday, Thursday morning. morning. So it's no surprise that everybody doesn't want to take position, mm. right? You are just going to like wait and see what, what's going to happen. So investors are actually waiting for, you know, to, do, to, to make some big investment in, in the market. And traders actually see an 83% chance of Federal Reserve going to lift uh, the, the interest rates compared with a couple of months yes. ago or probably two months back. It was only about 50%. Exactly. And, you know, just a touch on oil prices before we move on. The fact is, mm. you know, I, I saw this analyst report where they said that OPEC, which is the oil cartel, is not going to cut production until the end of 2017. Mm. So that's continue. Not going to be an issue even mm. as we go into 2016. Moving on to our hot stock of the day. Ah, there was a tissue thin reason for picking this one. Up about 5.37% to 78.5 cent or 79 cent, I think the chart will say. NTPM. Mm. So what they are is they are a paper manufacturer. Manufacturer and of course our colleague uh, Ko Su Chuang is his favourite thing because they do adult diapers, feminine hygiene products which is called Intimate, you might see it on shelves, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, baby wipes uh, and they do Premier which is actually my favourite brand of mm. tissue. I didn't really realise I had a favourite brand of tissue till I went to the Mine supermarket. Mine is because really? it's the softest, yes. Really? But anyway, this company is a Penang based manufacturer, now I know why Ku Su Chuang yeah, likes, <laughs> likes it, yes. It. Now, news is uh, its second quarter net profit actually soared 85% to 17.04 million ringgit or 1.5 cent per share from 9.19 million a year ago. Revenue rose 10.6% to 152.63 million. Now this is actually due to, due to increase in sales of personal care products. Now their personal care products segment actually posted a revenue of 95.1 million ringgit increase of 19.3% year on year. But the thing is right, Actually, the, the company uh, Lee point, pointed out that depreciation of ringgit would actually add to in, its input costs. Meaning when they buy when they yeah. buy their raw materials from overseas, it's going to be more expensive to the company. But funnily enough, RHB, report, RHB actually issued a report mm. today and they said that the margins didn't feel that much of a pinch, which means that the, gov the, the company itself probably, if I want to be stereotypical, in typical Penang mm. fashion, did manage to find a way to cut corners and mm. save money because they also, because RHB also think, and I also completely agree, the products that they sell are products you will definitely use, you know, regardless of GST, mm. regardless of any increase in price. You will still need you your still diapers, you will still need your tissue, and Perfect. of course, you still need all of that intimate care products. Toilet so, paper, so Toilet of paper, exactly. So <laughs> I think that's a great thing for it. The, that the, I suppose the USD is the warning that mm. maybe margins go erode, but if you look at these numbers, it doesn't look like it. I mean, what does RHB say? They still maintain, right? Yeah, RHB actually upgraded its rating to a buy call from neutral with higher TP of 89 cents. Now, they say that the latest results of what I said just now have exceeded expectation of everybody. And it, they like this firm because of the resilient demand of its products. Everybody exactly. still needs to use tissue. As we said. We, it it's, it bears all. emphasizing. Right. The fact is, we were looking at NTPM today for the very, very simple reason that the results are stellar. As a result, their share price actually jumped about 
percent uh, because their products, which includes a lot of intimate care products and all, are all very resilient. Mm. So that's why the numbers keep going. RHB definitely likes it. Actually upgraded it to a buy. Moving on to stocks with momentum. We love choosing things that we've never almost ever heard of before. Niche Capital Amas Holdings Berhad. Very apt for a name because niche really literally means a small corner. Mm. And this uh, share price... Wow, talk about enthusiastic, 15.38% to 15 cent. Even the fact that we didn't see anything about it, not a whisper, not a fart in the wind, mm -hmm. nothing of that. So but, mm, what did they do? Actually, what happened, they actually, uh, you know, they manage, they sell gold, they trade gold, and it's some, it's a kind of company like uh, Pukong. Now, this company was packed as negative momentum by the HB Search today, and earlier this year, uh, in October this year, these are uh, their external editor, sorry, external... Auditors. Auditors, sorry. Auditors, yes. Thank you very much. Be because you're clearly say. thinking about editors waiting outside <laughs> sitting in this booth. But the fact is, yes, as uh, you were supposed to try to explain that yeah. they were their auditors said that there were insufficient evidence, correct, right? Correct, correct. Which for you, isn't that a massive red flag for you? So what happened in October this year, I'm just going to go to... Yeah, yeah. Uh, because they say that they were unable to obtain uh, suf sufficient appropriate audit evidence on the 243,000 ringgit to acquire 90,000 unit shares. So obviously, they actually went through some difficulties during this year, uh, earlier this year. And the thing is, share price rise aside, we don't mm. really see any reason why it should go up. Because if you looked at their earnings, by the way, mm. now these earnings, of course, are, are still fairly, well, let's be, let's be very nice to them, dismal. Mm -hmm. uh, but in the annual report, they actually did say that top line rose because they because they don't they're not based in Malaysia. Let's mm -hmm. be very clear about that. Unlike Pohong, Kong, they're not actually based in Malaysia. They're, a lot of their I mean they're based in Malaysia, but their shops are not. There are mm -hmm. a lot of them mm -hmm. due to mm -hmm. China. They said it was because of a buying frenzy after gold uh, dropped. Mm -hmm. And now I don't know if you'll see the same thing. Mostly because gold mm -hmm. prices are going to be lower, as we mentioned, because of the interest rate hike. When if the interest rate hike mm -hmm. goes, that means it's not as much good for investors who have a limited pool of money to put money into gold, they'd rather put it into treasury yields mm -hmm. now, US treasury yields to be actually exact. Now we know that their operation is actually in China, but the group actually say that they will not expand its China operation due to uh, capital constraint. And they're trying to diversify its market presence to include uh, the Malaysian market and also some, some of the Southeast Asian markets as well. Just like we mentioned about uh, yeah. net profit, net profit was very little at 4 Yeah, million. exactly. We, it's, I think we just haven't seen enough catalysts mm. and you wonder why, Correct. you know, what's going to go on. But anyway, just to bring it all home, we're looking at uh, Niche Capital and Musk uh, Holdings Bahad. They, as their name suggests, actually sell gold. They're pegged with negative momentum for the edge research, despite the fact that their share price actually jumped 15%. Loss, well, their, their company is definitely in the tough times and let's mm -hmm. see whether or not there's anything for them to pull it through.